welcome back. Um, this is the second part of my tutorial series for uh, Crusader Kings 2, where I explain things uh, for the new players and those who like to get into it but uh, are not quite uh, not quite getting there yet. Um, so I started the game. Uh, with the ruler we created, Andre von Bentheim, basically me. <laughs> um, and on a uh, on a note, I the new players who didn't understand the creator, don't worry, you don't need it. It's a DLC that is optional. Um, if you get this DLC, you can get back there later and look at it again. Um, for you, only the part where I advise you to take certain counties or rulers is uh, is uh, necessary for you. Anyway, uh, this is the screen once you started your game. Uh, it will start in this uh, centered around uh, your chosen realm, in my case as the uh, Duchy of Saxony in northern Germany. And yeah, I will now explain the uh, UI a little bit uh, and it's quite it can go quite in depth so in depth so this might be a longer episode um, yeah let's have a look let's start where do we start let's start uh, <laughs> top left and we work our way through on the top left you see a picture and if you hover over it it says Duke Andre the first of Saxony that is your ruler in this case mine uh, if you hover over it it will give you some basic information it tells you your highest ti your titles I think only your highest title I, yeah I think your highest title so I'm the Duke of Saxony and also some other things uh, I will get into that in a little bit I'm 29 years old, and the head of my religion is Pope Alexander II. Uh, here's the nifty little thing. It's the Duchy of Saxony. If you hover over it, it says you who is the owner of this title. Me, Andre von Bentheim. Since when? 15 September 1066. Since today. And then the line of succession. Agnetic, Agnetic gave a kind. I will explain that in a minute. And then gives you your successors. So when I d if I die now, Magnus Billung will take over. He's actually the original ruler that I replaced by creating my own character. Uh, you can click on your picture and it gives you a more detailed overview of your character. Uh, this looks quite like uh, in the, ru in the design ruler designer. It has a picture of you. It gives you your air here. Again, it's my spy master Magnus Billung. Uh, it gives me my leash, so the one who is above me, which is the emperor it's himself. Um, then it tells me with these little numbers uh, opinion. Uh, what is opinion? Opinion is a basically every character has an opinion of another character based on their history, their uh, relations, their traits, stuff like that. So the character thinks of me uh, in a specific way and I think about the uh, what did I say? Character. The Kaiser thinks of me in a specific way and I think of the Kaiser in a specific way. And as you can see it can be quite different. So uh, if we hover over it you, we see that I have a, a very positive opinion about the Kaiser because I like his state diplomacy. Uh, state diplomacy, I will get into that in... it's just a around the corner. Elective monarchy succession plus 20. So we have uh, the, art, uh, the, the type of succession in the Holy Roman Empire is that we, the Dukes, uh, can vote on who is the next Emperor. That is uh, to my liking, because I can be voted Emperor as well. Uh, free investiture that is something with the church where uh, 
if we have free investiture, I can choose the successors of bishops uh, and not the pope. Autonomous vessels is the level of uh, crown authority. I will get into that in a bit too. But I like autonomous vessels because I can do whatever shit I want to do. Sorry for the bad language. Deal with it. Leash is kind. That is a trait. My leash has trait kind uh, and that gives me plus 10. Leash is brave. He's a brave man who has no fear for battle from battle. So I like that. And then we have patient versus wrath. Um, as I explained in the ruler designer, there are sins and virtues, and you can only have one or the other. Uh, they are num n numbered from one to seven, as in the Bible. Yeah, <laughs> which Bible? There are many. Uh, so basically, patient is number six, I guess. Five. Number five. And uh, uh, wrath is... Uh, patient is number five of the virtues, and wrath is number five of the sins. And since they oppose each other, we both get minus ten for that. So, as you can see, I like my Kaiser. He is a good guy. That's what I'm thinking. The Kaiser, on the other hand, he doesn't like me very much. Uh, my state diplomacy is pretty weak, plus five only, and I'm excommunicated. Sad face. Uh, I don't have a chancellor. Whatever. Uh, yeah, and these may vary uh, from day to day, basically. Um, you can get bonuses from high prestige or high piety and stuff like that. Uh, but that's about, uh, and as I said, everyone has an opinion about everyone. They all hate me. <laughs> Good. So, moving on. <laughs> uh, here is a picture of my wife. I don't have one, so there's no picture. I will marry someone. That's a good start. Uh, let's do this after the UI. This will be a very long video. Fuck me. Uh, here, with this button, I can find a mate, and I will use this uh, later. Here are my titles. Uh, so basically, this is a feudal era. Everyone wants to have a title. If you don't have a title, you are peasant. No one wants to be a peasant in the Middle Ages. Guaranteed. Uh, I don't want to be a peasant. I want titles. Uh, and you can see the various degrees of the titles. Here you have a little bigger crown, and you see that it's a duchy title, the Duchy of Saxony. I'm the Duke of Saxony. Uh, then we have counties. Counties are basically provinces in the game. The game map is splintered up in provinces, and I can click on various things. And if, it, if I click on the one with the uh, with my coat of arms, here it is. That's the... It is today, still, by the way, the coat of arms of Saxony. Uh, uh, you can see this province belongs to me. I will go into that a little later. Uh, so basically, I own, as you can see, four provinces, four counties. The county of Ostfriesland, the county of Celle, the county of Lüneburg. <laughs> send me some, 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 uh, if you're American or if you're not German, send me some uh, audio files uh, of you saying Lüneburg, the umlaut, the Ü. <laughs> or county of Göttingen. Yeah. So this are my I have a duke title and, and duke titles are um unlended. So just because I'm a, I have a duke title does not mean that I have land. I just th th it's just a higher title that covers more land than one county. Uh but I it's not that it's not a landed title basically. And in this particular thing I even don't even own one single county belonging to the Duchy of Saxony. I will show you that later too. Now on the right side we have our coat of arms from the House of Bentheim. We can click on that and it shows us every living and dead member of the House of Bentheim that ever was. At the moment one member, one living. That's me. Uh, here we have a 
that's basically the same. The dynasty tree. Family tree is the immediate family made with, with children, your spouse, your parents, grandparents, great grandparents. Looks nifty, if you ask me. The ram tree. Ram tree is an important tool. Uh, here you see every, you can click down to every vessel in the greater realm of the Holy Roman Empire, and that's quite a lot. Down to the barons. Yeah, let, let's me explain the, the rings real quick. This one uh, is the golden ring with the purple stripes. It's an emperor title. A golden ring on itself would be a king title. There is no other king yet. Uh, let's take it a few months and the kingdom of Bohemia will be formed. Uh, a silver ring with blue stripes is a duke title. And a silver ring is a count. And a orange or wooden ring is a baron. Uh, some more nifty things you can do here is you can check the levy size of vessels or of your emperor. So the emperor can raise 14,000 in, in manpower. So much man. He can raise 14,000 soldiers. That's what I wanted to say. If you look, I can raise 871. Uh, no, 955. That's odd. Anyway, that's that. Uh, you will use that to uh, check the strength of your potential enemies. Uh, under this little one we have our culture, which is German, uh, our religion, which is Catholic, which is part of the Christian group, German is part of the Central Germanic group, and German is the only culture inside this culture group. Here it says where we are currently are, reigning in Lüneburg, Lüneburg. It's here. Uh, here we will, these two are spots for, it, it shows our ambitions and plots, and I will discuss this later, what uh, ambitions and plots are. Here are our stats. Um, we have various stats. First, these are our personal stats. Uh, diplomacy, martial, stewardship, intrigue and learning. And they do various things and uh, let me explain that to you a little bit. Uh, diplomacy is uh, important for relations to your vassals and or other rulers. Uh, it also helps in negotiating stuff like if I want to there's a strategy in this game uh, for beginners or for starters to create a high high diplomacy character if you have the Zilsi and marry uh, Duchess Matilda of Tuscany because she has very very big land and you want you, you can take that but through marriage uh, it will help uh, Marshall deals with military uh, leading military or uh, increasing your levi levy size stewardship uh, increases your income plus uh, increases your domain size. Domain size is basically the uh, the amount of counties you can own without having penalties for it. Intrigue helps in uh, plots, uh, helps in assassinating stuff, killing stuff uh, and other stuff I will go into later. Learning is quite a curious stat. I think it uh, increases the uh, increases the stats your wards will get. Wards are basically children you take care of, you raise. It mustn't be your children. Uh, and then we have the state stats, which are your stats, plus the stat of your chancellor and uh, uh, the ch of your council. I will go on to the council in a second. Plus half of the stats of your wife. That's your state diplomacy, and it's uh, used in various chances for events and uh, plots, firing and stuff like that. Uh, then we have the four uh, well major currencies. Let's say currencies. First is wealth, basically. Uh, 
you can say gold or money, whatever. Uh, you pay your uh, troops with it or build stuff with it. Prestige is your, as you can s read, measure of success. Uh, basically, it's it's you m the more prestige you you have, the more uh, important you are in the feudal world. It's it's like a king will have a higher prestige than a count, stuff like that. Piety is how pious you are. It gives you bonuses to. Uh, relations with religious characters and score is basically every time your character dies you take over the next character and the combined s combined prestige and piety of your previous character would get accumulated on your score after the game ends the family or the dynasty with the highest score wins under that is uh, are our traits there can be various traits uh, as I explained one everyone has an educational trait educational traits are in four different no in five sorry in five different uh, categories and they are uh, basically uh, like your stats you can have a diplomatic education a military uh, steward education an intrigue education or a theological education i have uh, chosen midas touched uh, oh, let me Every, um, I should do that in the morning. <laughs> Every educational uh, trait I can have one of four, uh, one of four steps. One, uh, it's uh, you can see that on the dots on in the in the bottom. One is the worst, four is the best. So you can see Midas Touch, uh, named after the famous. Uh, Greek King Midas, who turned everything to gold which he touched, uh, gives me uh, a minor bonus to martial, minor malus to, to diplomacy, a plus nine to stewardship, plus two to learning and a fertility bonus. And other, uh, let me check for some other. Here, here is a, a gives some different. He is a charismatic negotiator, which is step three in the diplomacy ranks and give him plus six diplomacy and some other bonuses so everything gives a slight different and basically what you want is uh, and I will get into it if when I talk about education you want to have like uh, the educational trait of those who educate your children very high uh, often I educate my children uh, personally because uh, I build my character for it. The second is a positive health trait. It's genius. Uh, genius gets gains plus five to every stat. It's the best trait in the game. The next one is uh, a status. I'm excommunicated. Uh, I can get rid of that rather quickly. Uh, then we have four virtues. Uh, I'm temperate, charitable, diligent, patient. There are three more, which are chaste, uh, kind, and humble. I got it. And then we, I have one sin. Sin are the opposites, basically, of the virtues. I'm lustful. The opposite would be chaste, and so on. Temperate would be gluttonous. Charitable would be greedy. Diligent would be slothful, patient would be wrath, kind would be... I forgot, whatever. You figure it out. Um, then I have some, 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 some more traits. I'm arbitrary, so I uh, do with the law whatever I want, stuff like that. I'm ambitious, I want to achieve more. And I uh, have a negative health trait, I'm a lunatic character stark raving mad if you ever played dwarf fortress that's fun uh, this one is my combat modifier some traits um, modify your ability to lead your troops uh, like in this case I'm patient and patient increases my defense value so it gives flat 
and is multiplied with my martial influence. Yeah, the higher the martial, uh, my, my martial uh, uh, stat, the higher uh, the end result is. So in this case, I have a martial of 15. So 20 multiplied my, uh, by 1.5 gives me a 30% increase in defense if I lead personally. And I will get into leading armies later as well. <laughs> Man, that's a lot of talking. Uh, I'm not. Done, I need to take a drink. I'm sorry. Ah, water. Anyway, let's continue. Um, in your overview, in the on the bottom, you can see your family. I don't have any parents because I created out of thin air. It's a miracle. Uh, I don't have grandparents. Wards are children you educate. You can educate two children at once. Children are your children. Siblings are your siblings and former wives are wives that uh, died or have been died, if you know what I mean. Uh, vessels. Vessels are uh, landed characters underneath you. They, s they are, are basically what you are to the Emperor. And they come in different variations. In this case I sorted by rank. You see Eglimar von Oldenburg, he is a count. And uh, yeah. Then we have Benno von Osnabrück, he is a prince bishop. So his uh, county, the county of Osnabrück, is uh, headed by a church, not by a castle. So it's not a few, basically not a feudal, but a church run district of land, but he still swore fealty to you. Uh, here we have some barons. Uh, those are basically the. Uh, I will explain it in more detail when I uh, explain counties. They are uh, basically landholders underneath your your main uh, castle inside a county. Then you have your court. Courtiers can be your uh, direct vassals if they are on your at your court and doing stuff there, like your marshal even if his account is at your court uh, or some other guys, random guys or like the princes of Norway hmm, interesting uh, you can use these characters for certain tasks or give them land if you conquered new ones allies are your allies, I have none at the moment uh, you gain allies only through marriage or family so if you're related Let's say in 50 years, uh, a brother of mine holds some area in Germany. Then he's allied with me because we're related. And we will still be related even 10 generations after that. So we will still be allied. Uh, also, if I like marry the daughter of the Duke of Bavaria, he will become my ally as well. That's how it works. So, but if, like my wife, his daughter dies, our alliance will end. Let's make it, it, it makes uh, the alliance system very dynamic that you have fluctuations uh, in allies and stuff. Abroad means the uh, characters uh, of your family or your that are currently at another court. I think that's it for the character. <laughs> and I'm, that's, it takes fucking forever. Uh, well, let's just go on. Uh, uh, maybe I can get this in one video done. Hopefully. Laws. Laws are a very important stuff. Let's start at the bottom because it's the easier part to explain. These are laws that uh, basically cover levies and taxation of various state. Feudal, city, church. What are feudal, city and church? What was the difference? Let me explain with the county. This is the county of Lüneburg. Lüneburg uh, itself, if you can see, you can see it here blinking, is ha, is this county, but it consists of three baronies. One is the main barony, your county capital, which you hold personally. In this case, it's a, as you can see, a castle, which is a feudal, uh, a feudal uh, barony. So I hold this castle of Lüneburg. It gives you various stats, and I go 
into that a little later in, as well as this explaining stuff. Uh, then we have the second uh, type, which is the city of Bardovic, which is a city type of barony. And they have other buildings, other rulers. Uh, you can't, well, you can hold them, but you get penalties for it. Uh, because you're a feudal ruler holding a city type barony. And we have church land, Ch Bishopric of Gifhorn, which uh, is a church uh, uh, run uh, uh, barony, and you can also hold this, but you get penalties as well. So, with this, these are basically our laws. You can handle the levies, uh, certain uh, vessels if you give you, or the taxation the money they give you. So as you can see uh, feudal vessels give me more levies but they don't pay any taxa any taxes. Uh, cities and churches give me both normal for the same of both. So you can experiment with this. Usually what I do is I go for max feudal levies uh, and most of the time go for s harsh city taxation because I often build uh, new cities on coastal provinces, but that's going way into depth. Uh, in the beginning you really need have no need to tamper with this at all. Just let it be uh, and you can experiment with it in the later stages. But let's get to the very important part, this is the upper part, the Ducal Laws of Saxony. What are the... sorry just my microphone. What are the uh, ducal laws of Saxony? Um, first thing is the succession. It basically uh, uh, pff, brain lag. Uh, it it reglaments how or who succeeds you as the Duke of Saxony. Uh, in this particular example, we are on agnetic cognetic gave a kind. Uh, agnetic cognetic means that uh, the first male children will inherit, a child will inherit. If there are, is no male child, the first female child will inherit. That's the gender uh, question. The other two options are agnetic which means only males inherit, or absolute cognetic, which means that women inherit on the same basis of males. Basically the first child, regardless of gender, inherits. Uh, absolute cognetic is only available if you're playing uh, as a Basque ruler, which is a historical kind of thing. Uh, so basically you can choose about women can inherit or women can't inherit. In this case women can inherit if there are no, ma uh, no men. Gavelkind is the art of uh, is the art type of uh, how succession is done. Gavelkind means uh, every legitimate child would get a piece of the pie. So if you have one son, he gets everything. If you have two sons, that means that the first son will get your main county plus your m main title in my case the Duchy of Saxony and the County of Lüneburg. The second child will get everything else. If you have three childs it will trickle down more and stuff like that. So Gamelkind is a... It's personally the worst form of succession in my opinion. Because uh, even if you accumulate a big domain it will be split among your children, which will, that's the harsh part, will get claims, and I will explain what a claim is in a bit, uh, claims on the titles of your brothers, and so you will have succession crises and stuff. Not good. So we want, don't want to have Gavu kind. Uh, what are the other options? Uh, seniority succession. Seniority means the oldest member of your dynasty inherits. Um, seniority has it's uh, uh, too much talking. 
has its advantages. Basically, if you're playing for some hundred years and you have like distant relatives who are kings or dukes or whatever in somewhere else, so basically branches of your of your dynasty and you in, uh, institute seniority succession then generation after generation the lands of your family will get united that's a good good example of when seniority succession is actually viable uh, also it will make uh, the chances of you being assassinated <laughs> pretty high because uh, the second oldest wants to get the oldest you know get to be the oldest stuff like that medieval times uh, the next one is primogenitor primogenitor means the oldest legitimate child inherits all which is one well it is the easiest way to have a stable succession uh, this way only the oldest child inherits and if you manage your other child's well you won't get big succession crises. Um, I prefer primogenitor. Then we have elective monarchy. Elective monarchy is uh, very intriguing. Uh, as I explained, it means that uh, lower rank vessels, uh, one step below, in my case uh, I'm a duke, so every count level uh, vessel will have a vote. They vote my successor. Um, this is very helpful if you like to ch kind of choose who your successor is. Maybe your third son is a genius and you want him to succeed, so you choose him. Problem is, uh, sometimes your vassals who are ambitious or just hate your guts uh, won't cho choose the same one as you. They may choose someone outside of your dynasty, then you will lose your main title. Uh, so you have to be care very careful instituting an elective monarchy. Um, I usually tend to use elective monarchy early on and then switch to primogenitor. The problem with these succession laws is some ha have a crown authority uh, crown authority uh, a condition. And if you look at primogenitor, uh, I need to have high, or, or let me rephrase it, the realm I'm in needs to have high or absolute crown authority. Um, so I can't institute primogenitor at this very moment. Um, this is, uh, uh, the logic behind it is, if the Kaiser has a high authority against you, you have a high authority against your vessels as well. That's the logic behind it. And uh, basically, uh, you're breaking with tradition by changing the succession law. So that's kind of how the logic works. Uh, yeah. So basically, you're pretty much stuck at Gavelkind and elective monarchy, which both have no uh, restriction on. Uh, authority. So I would probably switch to elective monarchy uh, if I would have played this game normally. Uh, let's chosen show you. Uh, right, I can switch here to my uh, to my leash, the holy moment. But I can have a look at the imperial laws. So we see crown authority. We are autonomous vessels, and we have free investiture. The rest is not very important for me, so I can't see them. And I can, because it's elective, nominate and choose a successor. You see, the Duke of Austria is the front runner, von Babenberger, Duke of Austria, and uh, let's choose him as well. So you can see now, Duke Andre of Saxony chose him. Um, I, s I didn't talk about the council. Let's talk about the council now. What is the council? Uh, the council is basically your m highest advisors. Uh, they uh, do things for you, uh, improve stuff, uh, trigger events and stuff like that. 
five, you got five advisors for every stat. Uh, every stat got one, and you can see which stat is important for which position. The chancellor. The chancellor is a Catholic ruler or an Orthodox ruler. The chancellor is by far the uh, the most important one uh, because he creates claims. What are claims? To declare war in this game, to conquer new territory, whatever, you need a claim. You need to have basically a right to for, for his land. So what the Chancellor can do is fabricate a claim. So basically he, you send him, I will do this now, fabricate a claim and go to Lübeck. Uh, and he will go there and start, well, let's put it mildly, forging the shit out of some documents to make it appear that I have a a actual claim on the county of Lübeck that I'm the real I should be the real ruler of Lübeck so that's what he does for me uh, he can also improve the diplomatic relations with uh, my vassals or c he can sow dissent between uh, uh, another ruler and his vassal the second one is the marshal uh, the marshal is basically the leader of my troops. He can suppress revolts, uh, lowers revolt risk in uh, territories. Maybe I conquer some uh, uh, pagan territory and the populace <laughs> don't like to be ruled by a Christian, so he can be sent there to suppress the revolts. The train troops, which is what I will do in another book. Uh, so he basically increases my levy size there, or he can research military tech. Technology comes after this, uh, not very important. <laughs> it's the Middle Ages. What technology? Uh, next one is a steward. He handles my, my uh, basically a master of coin. He handles my income stuff. So I can send him to collect taxes, which I do. Increases the local tax by 30%, uh, dependent on how good the stat is. And, and that's, that's uh, one major thing. The higher the stat, the better the outcome. So basically he has a 10.68% chance every year to give me a claim on Lübeck. If he had like 14, it would be 12% or something like that. Uh, he can oversee construction. If I would build something, uh, it would be built faster or can research economy, economy tech. Ugh. Spymaster, very important. He uh, first thing you have to know the important stat is his intrigue. Ten is kind of decent, uh, but the very, 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 I can't stress it enough, very important part with your spy master is that he likes you. If your spy master hates your guts, you're a sitting duck getting ready to be slaughtered by some scheme of a mayor of some town. The spy master has the scheme option, which do, 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 does various thing. He it uncovers plots of guys inside your realm. I will do that now, uh, and uh, it deals with the faction system. I will explain that when I come to the faction system. But the spy master is very very important, so you know what's up in your realm, and you're not ending up drunk getting stabbed by a boar. I hope you get that reference. Uh, he can build a spy network which gives you higher assassination chance uh, if you really 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 want to kill some neighboring ruler. And you can study technology which is basically he steals them. <laughs> uh, and the last is the court chaplain. He is well semi important. Uh, he can convert a populace if you capture heathens. He can uh, uh, a heathen uh, county, you can send him in to uh, burn some witches and uh, convince people to get to Christianity. Church, having fun. Uh, he can research cultural tech, which is what I will do because I have nothing uh, else to do with him, or he can improve religious relations, which improves uh, relations with the bishop. Um, yeah, usually he is not very important.
basically. Um, yeah, that's your chancellors. Uh, always position yourself with good chancellors who like you. Uh, those two don't like me much, but it will change after I get rid of excommunicated. That's about that. Next is technology. Technology is totally not important because after all we are in the dark ages where there's absolutely no technological progress in Europe. Well, that's a lie, but not much. So, uh, some stuff you should know is uh, you can set a focus and it gets a bonus on, on being uh, learned, basically. Uh, you should put one in legalism. Legalism increases the uh, uh, um, short reign melee, melee you get uh, if you inherit and increases the domain size. Military organization deals with the retinue system. I will explain that later. And here you can choose what you like. I, I usually choose castle infrastructure. It gives me more build options in my castles. Not very important. I look at it like three times a game. Tops. Uh, military. Military. Very important. Military. We want to conquer shit. Uh, military has on the top three tabs. The first one is the army levies. Army levies is basically your levi levies from your domain that you can raise basically your personal uh, peasants working for you that you can call, give them a spear and say here fight, uh, and the ones from your vessels you can raise. Um, in this case I can raise 900 from my domain only and 44 from my vessel because I hate my guts. Um, Hired uh, deals with mercenaries. Uh, here you can see here's an overview of your vessels and how much they give you. Uh, the more they like you, the more you can raise from them. Then we have mercenaries. Mercenaries are basically professional soldiers that you can buy for money, and that will cost a lot of money monthly. Um, they come in different variations, from very cheap, 1,500 men. The Lombard band, for example, has. 600 heavy infantry, 300 pikemen, light cavalry and some archers. To ships which are fucking expensive. 75 per month. Uh, useful if you want to go to a crusade and you don't want to walk to Jerusalem. It's a long walk. Uh, and the Great Company, for example, with 4,500 men. Uh, then we have Holy Orders. Uh, they will come and play later. Uh, you can bash uh, heathens with them. Um, on the top we have two more. We have fleet levies. Fleet levies are ships. You can use them to transport uh, the guys around. There's no naval combat, so basically they're just transports. Retinues. Retinues is a interesting system. Retinues is basically the opposite of levies. Levies are peasants who work on the fields and if you need them, you raise them to fight wars. Uh, retinue are professional soldiers. You have retinue points, a cap, that increases in with technology and with how many troops you can, uh, uh, levies you can raise. So basically, the more levies you can raise, the more retinue cap do you, you have. Uh, so it pays to build improvements in your counties or conquer new territory. Um, you can there are four standard retinues. There is the offense uh, the shock retinue which is have massive heavy infantry and some archers. The defense uh, retinue which is pikemen uh, which have uh, defensive bony and some more archers. Then we have the cavalry retinue which is light cavalry 100 heavy cavalry and 400 light cavalry. We have the skirmish retinue, which is many archers, and then we have the uh, culture-specific retinue. In my case, I'm German, and we German we had knights, uh, so our uh, retinue is a knight retinue, which is 300 heavy calf. And heavy calf is fucking OP, uh, but it costs different um, retinue cap. 
to build one. They always come in 500 soldiers, as you can see, but they cost differently money, uh, money, and uh, and cap. So the cheapest is the skirmish one for 600, and the most expensive is the night retinue for 1,600. Whoop whoop. That's poor fucking much. Uh, basically, uh, yeah, retinues uh, are always on the map, so you can use them to. You ha don't have to disband them. They won't cost you money if uh, they only cost you money if they reinforce. So if they take damage and have to reinforce, they cost money. If they are full, they are just there and you can use them. Great addition. I love that one the most from the last DLC. Anyway, let's go on to intrigue. Intrigue. Starting with the faction system. What are factions? You can see we have no factions at the moment. Factions are basically you group up with mind line like uh, uh, like-minded. God damn it, I'm tired. Like-minded uh, vassals or rulers to achieve a per certain goal. As you can see, there can be factions inside my duchy, and there can be factions inside the Holy Roman Empire. Uh, for example, what factions could I start? Um, I could start a faction to implement seniority succession, the Holy Roman Empire, uh, or primogenitor, or game of kind. I can start a faction to gain my independence, or I can start a faction to make me the Holy Roman Empire Emperor. Stuff like that. Uh, Basically, it's an overhaul of uh, the vassal system, so not every little count raises up in rebellion wanting independence, but they gather first, accumulate power, and when they have enough power, they give you an ultimatum and stuff like that. Uh, pretty fun system. Uh, then we have plots. Plots is like different things, so I could like fabricate a claim on the county of Anhalt. stuff like that or kill some random guys like brothers of the emperor the empress or revoke the title of a vessel yeah um, then we have decisions decisions are uh, well pretty some random decisions we can make we can invite some guys to a court if we like uh, need a wife or some we can hold some uh, parties, fees, some affairs, go on a hunt, and we can interact with the Pope. And here's what I told you, how we get rid of excommunicated. I issue a declaration of repentance. I was a bad, bad boy. So I sent this to the Pope, and the Pope will answer me, and gives me the chance to pay some money and get rid of my sins. Absolution. Uh, in the bottom we have uh, an overview of the threats that are this here will be here listed will be uh, oh god damn it, my English sucks. Here will vessels be listed who are in danger of revolting against you. There we go. Prisoners are guys you have imprisoned. You can like sell them for money, chop their heads off, whatever. Known plots are the plots inside your realm. Uh, if your spy master does his job well, uh, it will be shown here what uh, guy wants to do with whom and who uh, backs his plot. Uh, you have to check this regularly. Diplomacy is basically uh, a screen where you interact with uh, other characters. So, <coughs> excuse me. If you see here, we have Prince Bishop Benno, who is a vessel of mine. So I can revoke his title, which gives me some negative penalties. I can give him some land. I can give him an honorary title. Uh, these are uh, good tools to increase opinion. Gives uh, plus 10 or plus 15. 
depending on the title. I can gift him money, which increases opinion, but only for a certain amount of time. I can throw him into prison, which gives me minus uh, opinion by other uh, from others as well. I can assassinate him if I have money. We could arrange marriage or betrothals. Betrothals, man. I can transfer vassalage. Uh, this, like, if you let's say I'm a king and I have some dukes, but I own, uh, I have a direct vassal account that is part of the duchy he owns. Then I can give him, give him the uh, vessel contract of him, basically. Yeah, so uh, diplomacy is uh, is where de uh, declare war or, s uh, or sue for peace and stuff like that. Um, then I have relig religion. Religion gives us an overview of our, over our faith. I'm Catholic. Head of the church is Pope Alexander II. He likes me decently. It's fine. Uh, here you can see a uh, called Crusades, uh, anti popes, and the moral authority. Moral authority is basically uh, how much authority the church has over the believers. If this goes down, heresies will spread, like Cathar or Lollet or Fraticelli. Stuff like that. Here you can see your bishops. Uh, bishops have a, they own, uh, have a special mechanic. They only, they pay taxes to the Pope or you, depending on who they like more. In this case, everyone pays to the Pope because they love him and they hate me. Uh, also, since uh, there's free investiture in the Holy Roman Empire, I can appoint successors. Uh, and usually you choose someone who likes it. Uh, that's the church. Catholic is not very harsh implemented in this game. Uh, actually, Orthodox has been reworked recently. Characters is a character search function. You can search your vessels in your realm, everyone, and you can just search for different uh, with different uh, filters. Yeah, and that's basically it for the top left, and I think I will have to cut it here. That's... Phew. I will have to make m some more videos to explain the freaking user interface. This game is really complicated. Uh, anyhow, uh, I hope that helped you. Uh, you can give me advice commenting below. And I will continue later on with some more UI stuff. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.